Brandon Ayuk is likely to be traded very, very soon. What could or what should those trade packages look like? Kyle and I are going to break that down for you today on the Locked On NFL Scouting Podcast. You are Locked On NFL Scouting with the Draft Dudes, your daily podcast for NFL and college football scouting. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. What's better than this? It's guys being dudes here on the Locked On NFL Scouting Podcast. We're the Draft Dudes. I'm Joe Marino from Locked On Bills. He's Kyle Krabs from Locked On Dolphins. And we are your NFL experts here with you daily to talk team building across the league on the Locked On NFL Scouting Podcast with the Draft Dudes, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Want to issue a big thank you, shout out, and welcome to our everydayers. Those of you who never miss a single episode, we appreciate y'all being here very, very much. Today's episode is brought to you by LinkedIn. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates that you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NFL. That's linkedin.com slash locked on NFL to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Do you have a question for you? Mm-hmm. I know you just got done talking and I turned around and flipped it back to no, you that's fast. All good, man. Important question. Yeah. Did you see the uh the darts only University of Colorado video that came out? Yeah, the yes, I did, Kyle. And I know maybe that's a little <laughs> bit surprising to you, but uh I don't think that was the result of that throw. No, it's uh <laughs> the other side of the field, totally different trajectory on the ball. <laughs> Spliced a couple of throws together. If you missed it, Colorado put out a thing and it was darts only, it was a picture of I think it was Shador, right, Mm -hmm. in the pocket. And he bounces around, he steps up in the pocket, and he rips this throw down the right sideline. And then there's a camera cut, and the receiver is looking over his opposite shoulder, catching the ball on the opposite (laughs) sideline with a guy draped on his body. And uh, somebody, what, what team was it? They, like, spoofed it already. Like it, was, it was like darts only, and it was like egregiously two different throws. It was like one was a bullet pass, and the other one was like a, a, a lob pass. So <laughs> I have a feeling if you're going to see a lot of darts only videos that are very badly edited to cut two separate plays together in the next 48 hours, it's probably just spoofing on Colorado's who just know that's where it started. Deserve everything they have coming. Like, who did you think you were going to fool? You know, like who signs off on this? Is anybody screening this? Does anybody care? Like, that's an incredible. That's, that's an incredible the, oversight, in my opinion. Of that hit, the that's uh, like the the, uh, <laughs> the first year Miami traded for Tyreek, and they put out that practice video of Tua throwing that quacker down the yeah. down the field, yeah. and they got roasted for it, and they deserved every bit of putting that one out into or, the stratosphere. Or Daniel Jones and his dimes throwing to the fullback the out full of the backfield, back flat dimes. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man, not great. It's not like, just great. put that one in your back pocket for another day when they installed not spider to Y banana. And <laughs> <laughs> there's so much content. There's so like you have 91 players doing cool things all the time. Like, right. Get something actually good. You can do right. it. I you promise. don't got to run the quarterback content no. today if you don't have no. the video no. for it. Yeah, it'll be all right. So uh, uh, good. Not quarterbacks, but not quarterbacks, but a quarterback's friend, Mr. Brandon Ayuk, uh, Kyle. I'm not sure if you've if you've caught this, but some momentum here that he could be traded. I'm ready for this to be done <laughs> just because I'm tired of opening up my timeline every day. And it's pretty Ricky says one thing and then all the insiders say no trade has been agreed to in principle yet. They're still having conversations, and then it's Pittsburgh, and then Pittsburgh's out, and then it's New England and Cleveland, and then New England pulls themselves out, and then it's back to Pittsburgh, and Cleveland's just sitting there like, what about us? So mm-hmm. we're we're going to hit this thing from all angles today. Yeah. yeah. Looking at it kind of through the lens of San Francisco, of their asking price for a, 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 a package, and I think you could probably make this pretty easy to say if you are willing to give a one plus that probably gets it done at this stage right i don't know that they're going to get that but would you would it be a fair assessment from your perspective to say if i were to offer you a one and another asset of some kind for brandon ayok at this stage it would get it done i think what makes this complicated 
is what I've said repeatedly, and I think most people understand this. The 49ers have a team that can go win the Super Bowl. And Brandon Ayuk is a big part of that equation. And so if I'm not getting anything that's going to help me win the Super Bowl this year, I don't want it. I don't want it. And so that's what I think makes this complicated when you start talking about draft picks. 2025 draft picks don't help me win the Super Bowl this year when I've got a ripe opportunity. And part of my process in preparing for this conversation today is obviously we've we've kind of developed some trade packages. But like you mentioned, through the lens of San Francisco, being mindful of what I would want. Because mm-hmm. if I'm San Francisco, and, and that's the lens that we're taking, it's not we're, nothing about what we're going to do today is predictive. If I'm San Francisco, I might just keep Brandon Ayuk. I'm going to try to make it work with Brandon Ayuk. If I'm San Francisco, I'm going to trade Debo instead. I'm going to do other things. That's not the scenario, but... right. Kind of feels like that's not on the table for them for one reason or another. Right. So because of that, this is really sticky and complicated. And not only do you have to have two teams that agree on compensation and any unusual layers, because not only does San Francisco think that they can win the Super Bowl this year, but nobody's nobody's not thinking that they have a chance right now, right? <laughs> to go to go uh compete for a playoff spot. Right. There's very, very, very few Contract teams that are willing to have that honest conversation with themselves right. of we're not going to compete for a playoffs. But right. <laughs> there's probably what five teams across the league. They could probably sit down and look themselves in the face and say, hey, it's foundational year for us. And that's it. Right. Right. So and one of those teams, ironically, was in on trading for Brandon. Ayuk. Right. <laughs> um, so it's complicated. And it then there's the whole extension piece of it, too, where Brandon Ayuk north of $30 million a year receiver. I mean, he's one of those guys, to Mm -hmm. me, in my opinion. He he separates. He wins at all levels of the field. But I think is is another complicating factor, and obviously we're going to get to the Steelers in the next segment because we've kind of set the table here this long. But I think part of the complicating factors for this all around is that for as much as I think very highly of Brandon Ayuk, he's not necessarily – been a number one guy like he's in an offense that has McCaffrey has Kittle has Samuel and he's productive he 1300 yards but his career high in targets is 114 his his targets per year 96 84 114 105 these 30 million dollar a year receivers get like 150 targets so like I think it's fair to if I'm trying to talk it down a little bit whether it's a contract for Ayuk or compensation for San Francisco I'm saying Listen, man, like he, I think he's a good player, but the the context of this scenario is a little unusual. I kind of say I, I hear you, but I also kind of feel like he is a player that can transform your offense because like, yes, he's been with Kittle and Debo and McCaffrey and all the dudes that were in the running back field before. McCaffrey got there, but at the same time, like you can isolate him away from the formation and line him up as the X and he's going to win the line of scrimmage. He's going to win routes in isolation. If you put him on the backside of the concept or you can run all the, the three man combos to the other side of the field and help attack that side of the field. And no, if you got to work to the backside, he's going to win a lot of one-on-ones. He's going to cook a lot of guys and he can run vertically. He can catch and high point the ball and attack the ball in air. He can catch the ball in traffic. He wins after the catch. It's like he, he's one of the more complete physical skill sets that we have right now. And that for me is it's like, I I wouldn't have a problem with the projection, but I think for the negotiation standpoint, that's where you make a good point of, uh, the, we, I'm paying for what he is. I'm I'm paying you for what he is, and I'm going to pay him for what I think he's going to be for me. Yeah. Makes it even more complicated, and perhaps that's why this has lingered for this long. Uh, right. All right, so two of the main contenders in this race for Brandon Ayuk are hmm, two AFC North teams, the Steelers and the Browns. We'll start breaking down what those trade packages can look like on the other side of it, folks. Be sure to stick with us. When you're hiring for your small business, you want to find quality professionals that are right for the role. 
That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help you find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. LinkedIn isn't just another job board. LinkedIn helps you hire professionals that you can't find anywhere else, even those who aren't actively searching for a new job, but might be open to the perfect role. In a given month, over 70% of LinkedIn users don't even visit other leading job sites. So if you're not looking on LinkedIn, you're looking in the wrong place. On LinkedIn, 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours and over two and a half million small businesses use LinkedIn for hiring. So hire professionals like a professional on LinkedIn. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NFL. That's linkedin.com slash locked on NFL to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. All right. Pittsburgh. Feels like the team that has the most buzz right now. So Pittsburgh has George Pickens. I think their their skill group is pretty compelling outside of not wide receiver one. So um they got a really compelling tight end room with with complementary skill sets and a high volume passing target in Pat Fryermuth. I get a two-headed backfield of a really physical runner in Najee Harris, a kind of more of a scat back and, and good receiving back in Jalen Warren. They have George Pickens, who can be an X and win down the field and win in contested situations. Uh, I think the most exciting thing about Ayuk potentially being added to this mix is he's a better separator than George Pickens is. And now all of a sudden you got two big body guys on the outside, and whether it is Justin Fields or Russell Wilson, both of those guys have, have shown a, a willingness to let it rip and throw guys open and, and trust guys on the perimeter. So that's the formula for Pittsburgh where it makes a lot of sense. The question, of course, is what's it going to cost you to get him in the building? I know what I'd want if I was San Francisco. And maybe I'd get laughed out of town. Maybe I would. That's okay. We're having fun here on a podcast. But if I were... Mm-hmm. Calling up Omar Khan of the forty of the of the Steelers, I'd say, "Hey, you want Brandon Ayuk? Here's what I want. I want Keanu Benton, because I think that the 49ers have a need at interior defensive line. I want Dwayne Washington, because I feel like, you know, him in that offense. Darnell. Did I say Dwayne Darnell okay. Washington? Thank Darnell you, Washington. tight end out of Georgia. I think him as a big bodied option that can block two tight end stuff with Kittle." receiving upside, I'd lo- I'd want him. And then I also want Calvin Austin as a piece for my offense that certainly has a lot of athleticism and just dynamic playmaking ability. So that, that would be the package. Because like I said already, I don't, I mean, look, there's 2025 draft picks don't help me win this year. I want young so players you're, with you're upside that can help me right now. Draft picks. You're more concerned about players. I want players, man. All right. And Keanu Benton's obviously really attractive for a team that's getting ready to pay a quarterback potentially next offseason in San Francisco because he's got three years of player control left. Yeah. All under two and a half million dollars. The next two years are under two million dollars. Darnell Washington was a third round pick. Uh his highest cap hit over the next three years, and it's three years of player control on a rookie contract is one point seven million dollars. Uh, and Calvin Austin has two years of player control left, both under $1.3 million. Three players on rookie deals with at least two years left on their contract. So that makes sense. But Pittsburgh's going to counter, right? And they're they're going to say, well, no. Um, who's the biggest player you think they could pull off of Pittsburgh's roster? The most high-profile needle moving player. Is it Pat for, is it the other tight end in Pat for our youth? I think you can make a compelling argument that if you are bringing in Ayuk and now you've got two big time receivers and you do have Darnell Washington in the, in the fold for in a contract year. And maybe that's less appealing to San Francisco, but I'm right. sure they wouldn't mind transitioning away from, another bloated George Kittle contract who I think 2025 is the last year of his current contract as well. 
So at least that gives you an exit ramp into a younger player who I think would be a good fit within the scheme. I don't disagree. I I would say I kind of want the three players I asked for. Candidly, like I'd rather have the three sure. players. Yeah. 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 I wouldn't want to swap any one of them out. I mean, yeah, I'd maybe, I mean, I'm, sure I'm just trying, trying to think of as many different names that make sense to fold into the compensation package. So if Pittsburgh is indeed the team that gets it done, we hit it from enough angles, you know, like if, if is that Pittsburgh's compromises, uh, 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 three and Friar Muth, right. And I know that that is getting away from what your stated interest right. is, right. but I think that kind of makes it interesting because I had like, I had San Francisco asks prepared. And I also had like, team offering two San Francisco packages. Prepared. What do you got? So uh, Pittsburgh, I think, would be wise to look at players that are in contract years. Um, and, and that's where I go to another spot, which is up front, James Daniels. I think it'd be a really exciting addition. He's got guard center flex. San Francisco's offensive line investments have been well established uh he is a contract player contract year player owed eight million dollars in cash and san francisco has the cash or the cap space right they got right. 50 million dollars in cash Plenty. Space. yeah so onboarding an eight million dollar salary and then making a decision of we're going to let him walk or not going to let him walk at least you're getting a player back that can help the overall performance of your front in james daniels uh, and he's young where maybe you get into it and you're like, hey, we want to pay him. And if we're going to pay a competitive cost, it's going to be 50% of the cost of paying Brandon Ayuk. So you know, James Daniels, that you you probably still have to trade send a, a reasonable draft pick. Because what in a vacuum, James Daniels probably valued at a day three pick as a guard. Right. Owed $8 million in cash, right? Regardless right. of right. whether he's a good player or not. He is a right. good player. So is it, is it a 2025-2 in James Daniels? Like, that's kind of... And, and that illustrates the divide here because you as San Francisco is like, I want young players with two or three years of player control on that we know are good players already, like Keanu Benton, like Darnell Washington. And me as Pittsburgh, I'm like, I'll, I'll give you a draft pick and I'll give you a good player, but a player that probably we are not intent on based on they drafted what four freaking offensive linemen this year. Yeah. Or three Frazier, Fatato and McCormick. Yeah. Yeah. And they drafted a tackle in the first round last year. Right. Probably this is pretty well established, right? Like yeah. you kind of know where their mind's at on the offensive line. And it probably doesn't involve paying what's going to be 28 year old James Daniels next off season. Right. So that's the, the magnets are kind of flipped in opposite directions here. So it's somebody's either got a blank, which would be Pittsburgh, I think, giving a first round pick or being willing to compromise their defensive front with a Keanu Benton, who I think is probably the most attractive piece from San Francisco's standpoint, because Benton is everything that like John Kinlaw was supposed to be, is he's already kind of shown that he's capable of being. Yeah, I just feel like that 49ers defensive line just has had a lot of attrition throughout the years. Mm -hmm. and I'm concerned about it to some to some extent, and I think a young player like Benton would reinvigorate a lot of what I think that defense could be. Go to the Browns. Okay. Yeah, we got the we got the Browns. Anything else on Pittsburgh? Like, I feel like let's let's say this: How much of of the Browns in their involvement or their rumored involvement is just pinning? you know, pinning a, a, a division rival against Pittsburgh to maybe drive up the cost a little bit to, to make sure that, hey, not only do we get him, but we make sure Cleveland doesn't get him. I, I certainly think there was a lot of gamesmanship going on with San Francisco based off of all of the big media insiders kept saying Pittsburgh's not really a piece of the puzzle right now. It's Cleveland and New England as two teams that had a lot of ammunition right? Or there's divisional leverage there. And then magically Pittsburgh re-enters the conversation after being out of the conversation for 48 hours. And mm -hmm. you see that quite a bit with whether it's a player in free agency or something like this, where T 
teams get used as leverage to try to up the urgency for the team that's really kind of in the catbird seat on on trying to get this done. And that's I I would be more inclined to agree with you. I'm sure Cleveland has something out there, but first of all, Ioka has to agree to go there, Mm -hmm. and that's kind of been the biggest lynch or or or, uh, the biggest rock in in these gears is everything is is Ioka with what you would be trading to get him and him being in a contract year, he holds a lot of the cards here from a leverage standpoint. It effectively works as, as a no trade clause. And we kind of heard that alluded to with new England and they, by all reports from the new England media, they've been very aggressive in trying to get this done. And I just looked at the situations like, no, I'm good. Not going there. And with the Browns, right, they just traded for and paid Jerry Judy. And they just kind of reworked Cooper's deal a little bit, too. It's like, really? Are we are we really believing that that Cleveland's in on this, or is it just negotiation stuff? All right, Kyle, let's talk Browns, other teams on the other side of it. Folks, be sure to stick with us. The NFL season is here. I know you're excited to get to the stadium and watch your favorite team in action. Well, if you want to do that, you got to check out Game Time. Download the Game Time app. It's the it's the fast and easy way to purchase tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you. I love the app. Easy to navigate. They specialize in last minute tickets. They give you flash deals, a seat image, and of course, their best price guarantee. And I love the all in prices. You know the total price at checkout from the beginning of the purchase, which is outstanding. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NFL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code Locked On NFL. That's L O C K E D O N NFL for twenty dollars off. Download the Game Time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. So, if I can, mm-hmm. the attractive nature, I think, for me, with Cleveland with the Amari Cooper uh, potentially being a trade chip here, right? Is they have, I don't say backloaded, it's not the right word. They have void years for everybody on the roster, right? Mm -hmm. This is very much a strategic decision with Cleveland and how they are choosing to compete. And if you have a chance for a player who's due $22.5 million in dead cap as a 30-year-old wide receiver in a contract year, are, do you have – are you going to re-up Amari Cooper and automatically take – it's going to be – Seven and a half million dollars in 2025 and 2026 in money that you've already paid him against the cap, or do you want to wipe that slate clean and kind of start fresh with that contract with a contract in that room? I think I want to start fresh. I think that's what, if I'm San Francisco, part of my appeal in trading with Cleveland is that I could get Amari Cooper back, and you can get Amari Cooper back for like 1.2 million dollars, right? I want because they, they paid the signing bonus to spread out his newest money across five years and he's only under contract for this year and he's got a minimum salary. So that's the really attractive piece of this for San Francisco is the cost of Amari Cooper coming back as the player in the trade. So what else? Like Ayuk and Cooper are the centerpieces of the deal. Ayuk, I think is the player that has more value. There's certainly a contract conversation to have on both sides that I think the Browns got to give up something else as well. Mm Mm-hmm. What's something else? I mean, I have my sights set on something pretty ambitious, but that's that's me. And I we, okay. we didn't do the disclaimer. Nothing pisses people off quite like talking trade compensation ideas, right? There's right. always someone that's going to be rubbed the wrong way, and I I acknowledge that. I, I okay, fine. But, Yell at but, me because you don't like my ideas. But you don't you don't think that's how these actual trade conversations get started and take place? Like, I mean, I, I would reference the Giants hard knocks thing as an example of that, but the Brian Burns thing was just picks, right? Like, mm-hmm. I mean, but that started with an offhand comment. Like, a lot of times you, you sit down and kind of players, the squeaky wheel 
gets gets the action right and right. Disagrees, it, yeah. if the player squeaks if the player squeaks then you know make the call and just start throwing names out there so i mean i'm not saying we're we're going to do it for this but this is a part of of how you would have a natural conversation so your eyes are set on a big prize and that big prize is probably Martin Emerson. Ooh, I didn't think of Martin Emerson, but that that's a nice prize. That's a that might even be more ambitious than what I had my eyes on. I don't think you'd get Martin Emerson and, and Amari Cooper. Like that's, I that, that's, that's not what that's, I'm, I didn't have lot. that down. I didn't have that. All down. right. What'd you have? I had Amari Cooper and Mr. Dewan Jones. Hmm. Be the right tackle in San Francisco. Colt McKivitt stinks, man. He's not a very attractive option. I'll say that. I mean, maybe, I mean, maybe Cleveland says get out of town. Andrew Barry says take kick rocks. Maybe so, but that's what I'm that's what I'm gonna say to him. No, I I I like that ask from a well, I don't know. Two of the names that we've we've mentioned here between Pittsburgh and Cleveland is Darnell Washington, who fell to the end of the third round, and Dewan Jones, who everybody had a chance to draft and lasted to the fourth round. Mm-hmm. So I don't, I, you know, there, there's clearly whether it was medicals or being the right fit in the right environment and team and culture, there, there, there was clearly concern enough that led both of those guys to fall. Where it's not like these are the bona fide top 25 players they were projected to be in the pre-draft process that everybody had in their mock drafts in January. Right. right. So that's my big swing. If it was Amari Cooper and a pick. A what three. The, what I was going to I think that's probably fair. Yeah. Now, does that move the needle for San Francisco to do it? And that's a different story altogether. I'd be excited about getting him. I think Amari Cooper's a really outstanding football player. He that's that's such an attractive player to get back in my mind for the 49ers because if you're really trying to replace that production, a Coop, that's Cooper that's as close as you're gonna get. Right. Right. Within the reality of what's out there and the teams that are rumored to be in the mix here. Right. And then San Francisco could, in theory, there's probably there's good wide receivers that you could get for a third round pick in the offseason. So if you weren't going to repay Amari Cooper, you're going to let him walk. I think you'd then turn around and potentially parlay the other asset that you get back to get another player in your room. Where it's not like you have to roll the dice on drafting another guy. And let's be fair, they also used a first round pick on Ricky Pearsall this year. Right. So and a and a four on Jacob Cowling. Mm-hmm. For whatever you think he is. I mean, a fourth round pick's not nothing. And they Juwan Jennings is here and Debo Samuel is here. And so they also have Frank Darby, which anytime we can shout out Frank Darby on the podcast, yeah. we have to we gotta do it. So Sun Devil's legend, Frank right. Darby. Did it for Chris Schubert. <laughs> Um, any other names for Cleveland's roster that popped to you? Yeah, I thought about, um, Okoronkwu on the edge. I wanted to find a defensive lineman and I don't know that there's a lot of interior guys that make sense, but I thought about Okoronkwu with Zedaria Smith and Miles Garrett in the fray and Alex Wright's kind of, you know, made some strides. So thought about him. Alex Wright kind of feels like he'd be a player that might be San want. Francisco's type too. Yeah, I mean, you when you pay a guy like uh, Yeter Grossmatos what they did, you know. Let's be fair, they drafted Drake Jackson very early. Right. And Alex Wright's got some similar build traits to him. So some smaller pieces, but I I think you certainly need a – Cleveland's in a a very unique position to offer a player in the position room that you're giving up that would be comparable for this year and this year only. Are there what any about, teams? That you, go ahead. Sorry, I was just gonna say. What about the rest of the league? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Like, are there teams in your mind that you're a little bit surprised that we're not hearing are in on this? I mean, we're talking about like we've established in segment one, a guy that we think very highly of as a wide receiver that's young, that's been unbelievably productive, big plays. I mean, what more could you want? There should be other teams 
that are in this conversation. I have a feeling you're going to go out to the West. Yeah, I, the Chargers. I got another team out in the West. Okay. The Raiders. The Raiders, eh? Devontae Adams, is he happy? Is he not happy? Just go ahead and take that on and let them get younger. Right. And you also have, who did Brandon Ayuk play for in college? Ah, AP. Antonio Pierce. Where's he the head coach now? Yeah, yeah, I heard about the that. The Raiders. Yeah, the Raiders. Um, I think you got to mention the commanders. Can you see like a situation where there's obviously some love there with Jaden Daniels? Jahan Dotson feels like, you know, mate, like Luke McCaffrey is obviously supposed to be like the next greatest receiver in the history of the world. So McLaurin, McCaffrey, Ayuk, you send Dotson back to San Francisco with a little bit more and get that done, maybe. So Washington's also a really unique team because they made a whole slew of draft picks for guys that aren't running the operation there that have three years of player control left on. Right. Like that whole draft class. Remember we sit there, we did the the breakdown of Washington's roster. Right. It's like they spent a lot of money in all these rooms that they right. just drafted a bunch of guys early last year. Jatavius Martin and, and, uh, Emmanuel John Ford Dotson, and, send them. Yeah. And the well, that that whole draft class. And it, well, who was the, who was the offensive lineman? They drafted in the third round and then um, spent and replaced out of Arkansas, already. right? Yeah. Who's the center out of Arkansas? Whatever his name is. What's Ricky Stromberg. Thank you. Yes. Ricky Stromberg. So like, uh, uh, there's a bunch of guys that say, Hey, you want guys on rookie contracts with multiple years of control left on them. We spent a lot of money in free agency to, <laughs> Bring another guy because we just did a total one one eighty on what we were doing systemically, right? I think they could they could probably have the most compelling young package group, Washington, right? And now, you feel I, like Ayuk would want to go though, right? Like he wants to play with Daniels, right? Right. It it, it you kind of get the sense Washington and Pittsburgh are the two teams that he's most right warm on, right? So th those teams make sense. The Cardinals are in the division, so they're not going to be right. Candidate, but yeah. you would certainly they you should mention them. But they'd be, they'd be a qualifying team for sure. Right. Even the Lions are the Lions. Are the 49ers aren't going to want to send them to the Lions. I'm sure they want to send them to the AFC or a team like the Commanders. Be my guess. How about, how about another desperate team? The Giants. Boy, imagine going from what they were throwing to last year to throwing them a league neighbors and Brandon Ayuk. They only, With, I mean, you got to have 14 million in space, right? And they've only got 9.8 and well, they still got to operate. You, you extend them right off the jump. You'll, you'll get it under that. But don't you have to, you have to take the contract as is initially. Okay. So take it, restructure like. I'm sure they can figure well, it out, right? Well, they, they didn't touch the Daniel Jones contract because they want the out. And I'd keep that out if I were them. Right. You could keep the out, but you could also put a void year on the back end of that thing and right. kick out a percentage of it and then spread it out just enough to get compliant. Especially if you're Joe Shane and and Brian Dayball. And if you it doesn't work this year, you're gone. Right. So who cares about whatever the heck you've got to get up for future? But to, again, if it comes back to what they, I mean, Evan Neal probably com becomes part of that conversation. Oh, we can't let that happen. He'd be a bit, he didn't have right, right over there. there with Chris. I mean, that's, I mean, Evan Neal's part of that trade, right? I mean, yes. no doubt about it. Yes. Well, that's, that's part of getting compliant. Then there you go. Yeah. So when's this going to happen, dude? <laughs> it's like, uh, the next week. We should probably wrap this up in case it happens right now. <laughs> right. We got to post this podcast right away. <laughs> All right. Well, with that in mind, we, we've introduced a bunch of teams. Pittsburgh feels like they're the most probable outcome based on the teams that have been talking and then the momentum. But uh, we just gave a bunch of teams with a bunch of players and a bunch of packages that might be interesting. We'll see if San Francisco ultimately does this deal, what they get. I'm Kyle Krabs. He's Joe Marino. You can find us on YouTube or wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. Make it a great rest of your day. We are out of here.